spinning techniques. They never ever work in fighting and you should never do them in self-defense, right? Well, I actually think there might be a context for using them in self-defense and you can definitely use them in a real fight. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about several of my favorite spinning kicks as well as spinning punches. Actually, it's just gonna be the one. And I think the best way to apply them in self-defense. So make sure you subscribe, do everything YouTubers tell you to do, and let's get started. So, by the way, we're rolling. Thank you. <laughs> Reasons to do spinning techniques. Number one, they're a good way to add momentum to your strike. Uh, it's a good way to create a lot of power very quickly. They're deceptive. If you do them right, you get your opponent looking over here when actually you're moving over here. And they're just kind of cool looking. <laughs> First one we're going to talk about is going to be the retreating back kick. This isn't, it's obviously not a full spin, but it gets us warmed up for it. So from this position, what I want you to do is take your rear foot, turn it to six o'clock, let your left foot come across your center line. Boom, right there. So you're now retreating, look, you're running away from me. That invites me to rush in towards her, opening up my center line. Go ahead, boom, right there, good. Again, I'm here, I start to rush, she looks like she's running away, boom, straight down the target. The reason I like the back kick so much, especially in this contact, is because it's the longest kick you can generate. Uh, let me see your leg. Go ahead and put it right there. Back kick. <laughs> Go. What are we doing here? Right there. Leave it there. Leave it there. God, Tommy. Look how far away you can keep me from here. I'm not punching you. I'm not kicking you. It's the longest kick you're going to be able to throw. And because of how deceptive it is, if I rush in hands down, I'm running into it. If I try to throw something from here, I'm running into it, right? And for the karate taekwondo crowd, they're going to want that <clears throat> full extension. I almost never do that, and I still land this kick with a lot of power. I'll almost always land this kick kind of jammed up, but I'll let people spear themselves into it. What happens is you, you walk towards me, walk towards me, boom, right? I don't fully extend the kick, but because it's there while you're moving forward, even that is going to hurt. Let's move on to our second kick, the full spinning back kick. From this position, you're going to take your lead foot, step across, turn all the way to 6 o'clock, and look over your opposite shoulder. Now, instead of kicking with the left leg, you're going to kick with the right leg, straight down the line. Mm, right there. This is really good for if you have thrown the retreating back kick, I'm now scared of the left leg, so get me scared of the left leg, right? You let me worry about that one, when meanwhile, boom, right there, yes, good. And the more you rotate on this one, the more power that kick is gonna have. Any strike, right? Whether we're talking about the cross, there's more power with that rotation than there is here, right? So imagine if I let myself go, boom, right? Me. Some of the more astute assholes watching this video might be commenting her spinning back kick is actually a spinning side kick because her heel is this way instead of this way. As someone who's kicked and been kicked thousands of times, very rarely does it hurt less because of where their heel is. If you happen to throw a spinning side kick, great. If you throw a back kick, also great. It doesn't matter. Hit them with something. It's going to hurt. So I don't want to hear it. Your side kick is fine, but do better next time. So the two kicks we've talked about so far have both been straight line kicks. The retreating back kick is my lead leg coming straight down the line. The spinning back kick is the opposite leg coming straight down the line. Great for when your opponent is rushing towards you with their hands up, getting a center line right down the middle. But you might not necessarily be able to land a straight shot. Sometimes you need more of a sweeping shot. In this case, we're gonna work the wheel kick. Same exact footwork on this one. So, Nice and slowly here, you're gonna step across, turn your body, but now, instead of pissing your leg towards me, I want you to swing it through, land it right there on the tie pad. Go for it. Boom, right there, yes, good. Again. Oy, yes, good. Aggressive step, aggressive step, go for it. Yes, there it was, awesome. Spinning wheel kick, spinning hook kick, the difference is minute. If you can land that or make it look effective, it's gonna be one of the most dangerous kicks you can throw. By the way, I've heard someone make an argument that the hook kick is a lesser kick because it's not powerful. I've seen so many people get knocked out cold for a well-placed hook kick. Is it hard? Maybe, maybe not. But as long as you land it right there where the jaw meets the neck, they're going to sleep. If you land it right here where the ribs meet breakage, they're going to puke. It doesn't matter that the kick isn't as strong as a tie kick. It's about where you're placing it and how you're using it. And that's honestly true of all of our kicks. But, we're done talking about kicks now. Let's talk about the one punch we're going to be talking about today, the spinning hammer fist. Now, I don't think there's a person who can argue that the spinning hammer fist isn't useful. 
Hundreds of thousands of TIE fights have been ended by someone throwing a spinning hammer fist. It is an effective strike. Uh, you trained in Krav Maga, right? Sure did. That's like the thing you learn on day two, right? So there's no one doubting the effectiveness of the strike, but there's ways to do it right and there's ways to do it wrong. The way to do it wrong is to do a surface level strike, right? If I come here and just kind of touch it, right? If I don't have anything in my hand, there's no power in that. And you can see what I'm doing here is taking the spin, but stopping before I throw the strike, right? Realistically, what I want to do is come here and swing through my target, right? I don't necessarily want to come here all the way through there, but I don't want to stop short at the target, right? So you want to go Goldilocks, just past the target, using the momentum of your hips to swing through, right? Take my arm off. Oh, yes, good, good. Good. Give me that little bounce. Yes, when you're ready, when you feel it. Yes, good. So, as with everything in life, your success is mostly based on timing. And in this context, if I'm here with Miss Tracy and we're sparring at the very beginning of the round, and the first thing I do is go for a spinning technique, it's probably not going to work. We're too far away. You have no reason to be afraid of me spinning. I just haven't done the proper work to set up the spinning kick. That being said, if we're more in the middle of the round and we've exchanged a few times, maybe it's okay to go for a spinning strike then. But I don't think that's the best time to go for a spinning technique. I think the best time is after a break from the clinch or stand-up wrestling. So I'm here with Miss Tracy. We clinch up tie style, 50-50. We're here like this. We're moving around. Go ahead and take a step and spin. Boom, boom, maybe throw a knee. Break the clinch. Boom. What is my immediate reaction from here? I want to come back in towards you, right? Human psychology. You push me away, I want to come right back. Oh yeah, you are, you're already <laughs> feeling it, right? Push me away, I want to come back. As I come back, meet me with the retreating back kick. Boom, right there, good. So a little more fluidly. We're here, we tie up. Boom, here, get me going. Boom, throw a knee. Boom, other one. Boom, one more. All right, send me flying. Boom, and now, go for it. Oh yeah, right there. I'm gonna be more concerned with recuperating myself and getting back in the fight than I am with worrying about the fact that she's turning around. In fact, if I see you push me away, go ahead, and you turn around, I'm immediately pissed. I'm immediately rushing. Oh, right there, yes. Again, we're here. Boom, I've got control of her. Boom, boom, boom. I send her home, boom. Yes, good. Yes. To apply the spinning wheel kick, instead of going from the clinch, we're going to go from over under. So, I come here, snake this guy through, over the top here like this. Tracy started trying to get this hand across my face here. Boom, she's got me cross collar here. She's going to shove me away, but now she's here. She's already heavy on this side. Step across here, go ahead. Boom, wheel kick right there. Again, we tie up here. Boom, I'm trying to go for a takedown. She's like, hell no, cross collar, shove. Boom, yes. Get that knee up. Tracy's been dancing for 42 years, something like that. So your, your instinct on this is gonna to be to keep your leg straight, right, from the very bottom to the top, right? But if your hip isn't aligned right, the highest you're gonna be able to throw is like right there. Not necessarily wrong, but if you let that knee bend, you're gonna be able to swing it up high, right? Yeah. My knee dictates how high I can kick. If I'm down here, that's as high as I'm kicking, right? If I let my knee travel up, that's when I'm kicking up high. My hip dictates how much power I'm putting into it. So if I want to kick harder, I'm not going to flick my knee harder. I'm going to flick my hip harder. Try that. Yeah, look at that. Last one, we're going to apply the spinning hammer fist. And in case you haven't recognized the pattern, we're going to apply it off of a break from the clinch or wrestling. Tracy's going to have me in a full double plunk. She's got me right here. She's got full control of me. She's controlling me, moving me around. She can throw knees, whatever. And for whatever reason, she doesn't want to be here anymore. So she's going to forearm shove me away, get that cross collar position. Now from here, as she goes for that break, she's going to step across, come in, boom, right away. So we're here. Go ahead, cross collar here. Pull your elbows into your body. Mm, right there, good. Now from here, get your feet moving. Right there, whenever you're ready, forearm bump. Yes, here. Now, you've got control of me here, right? You've got a good, almost like a, I call this the mafia choke, right? It's like you're like, I'm gonna make you enough for you can't refuse. That's where you're at, right? But I can fight from here, right? Eventually I'm gonna find a way to sneak out of here. So this is a momentary buy. 
As soon as you feel like you're losing control of me, let me go. Boom, and then as soon as I come back in, right away, yeah. So again, we're here. Clinch up, boom, here, mafia. <clears throat> boom, yes, right away, great. All right, y'all, so there are the best ways, I think, to apply the spinning techniques. Whether we're talking about kicks, punches, elbows, whatever. Now, self-defense wise, things are a little different, but not that much. Obviously, we don't have the time to be here and feel out our opponent and find out when we can do the spinning strike because everything is condensed. Everything in a self-defense street fight happens on a much more condensed timeline. But we already know that 90% of all street fights end up going from here to some version of here, right? And at some point, we're gonna get out of the situation and that's when it's time to throw your spinning technique. Now, that being said, there is also a time to throw the first strike. And that's the before the fight happens, right? If I'm here with Tracy and we're having a normal conversation, at this point, maybe I'm not happy with what we're talking about, but we're not fighting yet, right? I haven't, I haven't invaded anyone's personal space. We might be having a disagreement. The moment I step here, we are now fighting. And you might not know it yet, but I do, right? So at this point is when you get to make a choice. Ideally, you could disengage the situation, right? This is when you could talk it down. Maybe you take a step back, right? Or if you're a badass, that's when you take the initiative and do a spinning technique. The reason that's gonna land is because I don't think she's fighting me yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna go from here to here to here. And as soon as I see you start to step away from me, I go, oh, I got her. And then boom, right away. Yes, exactly. So it's not always the right thing to do to take the first move, but sometimes you have to, because like I said, this is an aggressive conversation. If this is a fight, you might not know it yet. If someone gets this close to you, you have to do something. Either, whoa, dude, back up. I don't want to do this. Or boom, right? Go full Karate Kid. I can't tell you which one is right. Every situation is different, but I can tell you sometimes you do gotta take the initiative. It's still self-defense, even if you attack first. Also, I'm not an attorney and I don't live in your state, so don't take legal advice from me. All that being said, these are my reasons for why and how you can apply spinning kicks and punches. This has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense, as well as Tracy from Combat Self-Defense. I wanna thank you guys for all our work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.